What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're taking a look at the new 14 inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro in space black. And I wanna dive in and see if it's worth upgrading from the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro that I'm currently using. And this is for my own curiosity, but I'm sure there's a few of you out there that have the M1 Pro and you got that back in 2021 like I did. And maybe you're wondering the same thing. Now I'm currently moving and I'm in a new place and I don't have anything set up yet. I don't have an office properly set up. Everything's a mess and unorganized. So bearing with me on uploads, um, I am making this video just in what I currently have. So it's maybe not gonna look as good as what I would normally do, but I do have a YouTube set I'm building out right now and it's gonna be awesome. I'm stoked to show you guys once it's done. This isn't gonna be a deep dive into benchmarks and speed tests because that doesn't usually equate to real world performance. All I really care about is the main apps that I've been using and I've been exclusively working off this 14 inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro for a week now. I've been doing all my video editing and resolve, photo editing and Lightroom and Photoshop. And I gotta say it's an awesome machine but so is the M1 Pro. This just has a little bit more juice. Now, both of these machines are the base models, at least the M1 Pro was because that's how it was when it was released, but the M3 Pro is just a step up from the regular M3. So this has the extra RAM, the extra cores, but they're both rocking 512 gigs of storage. The M3 Pro has an 11 core CPU with a 14 core GPU, where the M1 Pro has an eight core CPU with a 14 core GPU. So they have the same amount of GPU cores, but the M3 Pro has a significant bump in multi-core score, especially when we look at Geekbench, and that's because it has those extra cores and it's clocked a little faster. Now, the question is if this bump in multi-core score actually equates to any real-world performance, and in my everyday use case, I didn't notice any different. But it does handle 4K H.265 video and resolve like it's nothing. 60p, 120p is totally fine, but the M1 Pro can also do that. It just had a little bit more issues with 4K 120p. Now I usually work off my M1 Ultra Max Studio, so I'm used to throwing crazy heavy video edits at it. And this M3 Pro is actually able to handle it pretty well. And I wanna show you what it can do in a full music video edit with color grading, red raw video and stuff like that. So this is a 6K red raw music video. Everything's been color graded, there's effects, but it is playing back in a 4K timeline, but the timeline is actually at full quality. So we can see here that the M1 Pro is playing it back at 20 to 21 frames per second, where the M3 Pro is playing it back at a perfect 24 frames per second, no drop frames. So it is nice to see that the M3 Pro has a little bit more horsepower and can handle stuff like this. I'm also editing this video on the M3 Pro and it's obviously not an issue for it. I'm just shooting in regular H.265 10-bit 4K 24 frames per second with a little bit of 60p for some B-roll and it's been a breeze on this thing. Fans aren't running, it's nice and smooth. And if this is the type of stuff you would typically work on, then I don't think there's any reason to get the M3 Max. So I wanted to try something a little bit harder for the M3 Pro. We've got 4K, 120 frames per second, 10-bit video slowed down to 24 frames per second in a 4K timeline running at full quality. And that's five layers of video playing back smoothly at 24 frames per second. The screen capture looks kind of choppy, but it was playing back smooth at 24 frames per second. Now, if we go over to the M1 Pro, that same five layers of video cannot play back at 24 frames per second. It's gonna run choppy and laggy. But if you remove one of those five layers, it can actually play back four layers of 120 frames per second, no problem. So as you can see, there's a little bit more headroom on the M3 Pro. Now, one thing outside of performance, I'm sure some of you are interested in is how this space black handles fingerprints. Because although Apple said there's some kind of coding to reduce the fingerprints, it's still gonna be noticeable and you're, you're gonna see fingerprints all over this thing. And I'd probably still prefer to get the silver over the space black just because of that reason. But obviously if you're cleaning it and you're keeping up with that, it's not gonna be a big deal. In terms of color, the space black is kind of cool. It's sort of a chameleon. It's hard to film with direct light. It kind of makes it look like it's a space gray still, like or just like a maybe slightly darker space gray. I think it's just because there's some kind of metallic in the coating that makes it look that way. Actually over on Twitter X, I showed a space gray magic keyboard next to it just to show the difference so you can kind of see that it's sort of close but it's sort of different and they also included a braided black magsafe cable but the charger is still white so it's kind of weird i wish they would have included a black charger with that black cable in terms of io and design it's pretty much exactly the same as the m1 it's got three usb4 thunderbolt 4 ports magsafe UHS-2 SD card reader, HDMI, but on the M3, it's actually an HDMI 2.1, on the M1 Pro, it's an HDMI 2.0. So if you wanna drive a higher res display or a higher refresh rate 4K monitor, you can actually do that through the HDMI. And speaking of display, they both have that awesome ProMotion 120 hertz, 14.2 inch liquid retina XDR display. It's a thousand nits and it can hit 1600 nits peak brightness with HDR content. And now it can also match the studio display and SDR content at 600 nits when they're paired together. 
One thing I also noticed was how much faster the Wi-Fi is on this new machine. I have 1.5 gigabit internet here and the M1 machine tops out at around 500 to 600 megabits per second, where this M3 machine actually hits my actual speed of 1.4 to 1.5 gigabits per second. So if you have a Wi-Fi 6E router, but your computer doesn't have a Wi-Fi 6E card in it, you're never actually gonna get the speed you're paying for, unless you're going through ethernet. But the M3 Pro can actually hit those speeds through the Wi-Fi because it does have that Wi-Fi 6E card in it. And it's actually drastically noticeable, especially when you're downloading large files through Google Drive or Dropbox. Now, I know I said this video wouldn't be about benchmarks, but I did want to run Blackmagic Disk Test to see if the SSDs are the same or faster in the M3 Pro. And for whatever reason, when it comes to write speed, it was always about a thousand megabytes a second slower than the M1 Pro. The read speed was always about the same, but it's interesting to see that Apple was using faster drives in the older MacBooks. But this is still better than what they did with the M2 MacBook with the lower capacities where the drive was much slower. Obviously the M3 Pro is better than the M1 Pro as it should be and I'm glad I skipped out on the M2 because I feel like that was just a filler chip. Apple just wanted something new to keep the hype going but in terms of performance gains there really wasn't much there. So I still don't think the M3 Pro is a massive advantage over the M1 Pro but if you have the money the big gap is the M3 Max. So if you really want some serious gains, you go to the M3 Max because that's the best out of this generation. And in some cases, it was performing better than an M2 Ultra Max Studio. So that's pretty crazy to have in a little MacBook, especially that you can get it in a 14 inch MacBook. Now, if you're coming from an Intel Mac or a PC and this is your first Apple Silicon machine, you're gonna have a stupid grin on your face when you use it. It's so fast, it's so smooth, and it's so quiet. And especially when you're editing video, you're gonna see how much better this thing is and you're gonna see what this hype is about. But I still haven't decided if I'm gonna actually upgrade to the M3 Pro from my M1 Pro. I mainly work off my Mac Studio for everything, so when I'm out traveling, I just need a portable machine that's fast enough to do most of my day-to-day -day things, some quick video edits, Instagram Reels, Photoshop, Lightroom. Both of these machines are gonna handle it, no problem. It's only when it comes down to like some serious video editing and effects and things like that where the M3 Pro makes more sense over the M1 Pro. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Are you going to upgrade from the M1 Pro or is this going to be your first machine? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one. I, I need a set. I, I hate this. I don't like this. I feel... Do you ever feel like you need a clean environment to get any proper work done? If you could see how much junk is behind me, it's, it's bad. Why am I still talking? Are you guys still here? If you're still here, you guys are the true OGs. But I think we're done. I gotta go edit this video now.